Okay, new products. Very first new product this week is? Uh, this is an updated product. So um, the company that we used to get our uh, EL wire from, um, what, Wan Yu, they unfortunately went out of business, which is a shame because they made really great EL stuff. But we found a supplier that's almost as good, um, but a couple products are slightly different. So um, this um, audio reactive EL driver, just kind of like a common, you know, simple project for beginners because there's no coding involved. It's just audio comes in and it reacts to sound. Um, so this one is no longer six volt, it's now five volt. It comes with a USB connector and you just plug into USB, but it's still audio reactive. Uh, it works a treat and it's a great like simple, you know, you want to have a, a project that is um, reactive to sound, but you don't want to do any coding. This could do the job very well. Just plugs into any standard EL wire using yeah. like the classic JST A ton connector. of projects, would, a lot of time and effort and anger and frustration would be saved by you're probably, for a lot of folks who want to do sound effect activated stuff, this is probably what you want. Yeah, maybe we go to the overhead. because well, Let's go to the overhead. I'll just show this really fast. So you use, uh, you can use like a USB, um, Lipstick connect. I mean, anything with USB output will work. Yeah. And you can see as I speak. Uh, that is cool. It's uh, reacting to it and it gets brighter and it confuses the camera a little bit. Um, so you can use this with any uh, EL panel or wire yeah. or tape. Yeah, it's kind of bright in here. However, um, let's, uh, let's go to me real quick because I'm going to try something. So can you hand that to me? So if you had a costume, um, you know, you could potentially, you can even see it because I'm. You could potentially have this as like you know on the mouth or something like that. Yeah. It would look like it's it's talking. It's animating. So hello. Hi. Yeah, that's kind of cool. This is neat. Yeah, you want to want that on your eye? Yeah. Great. That's my product demo. Nice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, uh, I can do this one. So we have um, we we do women's shirts first in our store. It's a rule for us because. If you're a woman, you never get women's shirts, and especially in like tech companies, um, they're always gigantic male shirts. So uh, we now have male shirts because we did the women's shirts first. So this is uh, a shirt from the Share Zone. It says, I don't collect NFTs unless you're talking about nice fucking t-shirts. So this is our response to the people who continue to think that we do NFTs. We don't, um, but we do have a nice collection of t-shirts. Uh, we do have an NFT gallery on adafruit.com, adafruit.com slash NFT. Check out all the shirts that people wear, lots of black shirts with skulls. Um, and here's me modeling it. I don't have any NFTs, but I have the shirt. So check it yeah, out. Yeah, I don't either, but I, I have one of these shirts too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, we get blamed for it. Okay, next up. All right, next up, we have some more, um, you know, these these are called like aeronautic connectors, but they, these are not to be used in aeronautics. It's just the style. Um, I think these are really neat. Uh, when I was at the Media Lab, we did a project with these connectors, but we were using the very, very expensive type. Um, these are, uh, you know, similar enough that they have the same look and feel. Again, they're not mil spec, but they are a great alternative if you just want to have like a keyboard project or like any kind of user interface project um, that has a panel mount with this um, interesting like safety lock type. Tiny uh, lightsaber. Can I, yeah, <laughs> it's a lightsaber for ants. It's a lightsaber for ants. So let's, let me go to the overhead because this is, this is a kind of a weird connector and I want to show how it yeah. works. Yeah, this looks just like the lightsaber that I was looking at earlier today. It does. Anyways. Maybe yeah, the lightsabers sorry. were based Look at off this. of this. It's a mini lightsaber. Okay. Okay. Focus. You could, do it. you could do it. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, so it comes in two pieces. So we have another one, the YC8 series, and it's wire to wire. This is wire to panel. Um, and this is actually two pieces. So what's interesting is that if you try, you can't, pull these pieces apart. This is the panel mount part and this is the connector. But if you pull on this, it comes apart very easily. So there's this little spring. You can barely see it, but there's a little spring piece that comes out. There you go. And if you pull it in, you can then remove it, but otherwise it's locked in. Um, it's also keyed, all the red dots have to line up. They snap in very nicely. And again, you cannot remove it until unless you yank on this part. So this is like, you don't have to worry about it coming apart from being pulled, um, but if a human pulls on it from the right location, if you're just holding it at uh, this spot, um, it'll come apart very easily. Um, this is a panel mount connector, so it's got uh, a locking nut and a hex nut, and then you know you can solder to the four or five wires. We have a version with. Hold on, let me see. Actually, I think I only. Oh no, I have the five wire version here. Yeah. 
So um, this version is five. Um, is, this, is this the other product? This is all together. Okay, so I can show, I can show yes, this. Yes, we have a nice little demo of, the, right. of the same thing, but with nicer nails. <laughs> and then the panel mount connector, um, four yeah. pin and five pin. The reason I did four pin and five pin is four mm -hmm. pin is like USB standard Oop. and five pin is, you know, USB plus shield or something. Oop. You know, there's, there's I squared C, uh, USB. There's a lot of things that four five cool. pins. Uh, can do you can do some you know simple SPI maybe yeah. um, as well. So right. um, the only thing to watch out for is the cable connector side. You really need to there. There's a section inside of it. Can you move the overhead again? Yeah. There's inside. You have to uh, solder um, to these pin contacts, and this comes apart. There's a I think I need a tool to, I need a pair of pliers, but um, this comes out um, and then there's this collar that is call it that grabs the uh, shroud of the wire. And so your wire really, really needs to be um, the exact diameter that we mentioned, which is I think like four to five millimeter and it can't be thicker. It has to be able to get through this um, little section in order for it to grab, hold on, there you go, for it to grab it so that when this part screws on, it's um, when, you, when you pull the collar is what's grabbing onto the uh, sheathing of the connector, uh, the cable connectors. Um, so that's the only thing to watch out for is, is whatever cable you use, make sure that the outer diameter of like the rubber PVC casing is within the range for this connector. And it's like, I think four, to five millimeter or so. Um, and it really has to be in that number. <laughs> it, can't, it can't be too less and it can't be more. If it's less, you can add heat shrink um, to the outside of the cable when you solder, before you solder it in, and that can help uh, give you a little bit of mechanical um, uh, thickness for it to grab onto. But it really needs to grab onto it for this thing to work out. Uh, so yes, yeah, so these are kind of cool um, panel mount and um, you know, quick release connectors. Next and they're up. like very beautiful. Next up, we have another version of the ESP32 S3. Uh, this is the Room 2. I think this has uh, 32 megabytes of flash, 8 megabytes of PS RAM. This is a maxed out. So this has like the most of the most of the most. Um, and we just wanted to offer it because uh, some of the other versions were not available. Um, it's got the ESP S3 in it. This is a dual core USB native. Um, ESP Espresso by controller with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, it's got two USB ports, one for the debug port that goes through the um, USB serial connection. One is the native USB port uh, for native USB development, which we use in CircuitPython. So this is a nice little dev kit. Um, I know we have like a couple different flavors, but with the chip shortage, not every version of PS RAM and Flash is gonna be available. So like uh, we wanted to carry all the different ones in case like, if you needed one and there was one with more RAM available, you could use that for development while you're waiting for it to come back into stock. Um, but this chip is a uh, new uh, Arduino supports coming in as of this video. It's, it's being like merged into Arduino, uh, CircuitPython working on it as well. Um, so it's a very new chip, but it's very exciting because it's a uh, very powerful and it's very inexpensive. All right, next up, we have a whole bunch of pots. That's why the code was lin pots. Yes, we actually so. have one lin pot. The rest are actually audio pots, so log pots. Mm. But uh, these are dual pots. These are dual gang pots. Uh, we have them like 1K, 5K, 10K, 20K, maybe 50K, 100K, yeah, and then um, mega so, ohm. So, I decided so this is not the to, end of the pots. Yeah, I decided not to put in like every photo because like 50 photos. They're all, they all look very similar. So what I did was I just put in the ones that were like, right. here's three. So there's this the single. We have like yeah. one single. And so the duals are, I think, kind of new this week. The duals are, it's dual gang. There's two pots, two totally mechanically and electrically, sorry, mechanically they're connected. Electrically, they're completely separate. Um, these are often used when you want to control stereo signal. Um, they're all uh, log pots so that the they're good for volume control. Although there could be some other like tuning or, um, uh, you know, fading or mixing or whatever that you want two potentiometers that are like matched, they're synced up. Um, so these dual gang pots will do the job. Um, they have 0.2 inch spacing. You can use them in perf board. They're often used in synths, mixers, DIY audio projects, you know, panels, uh, modules, etc. 
Um, we want to stock a collection of alpha pots, and it's just easier to get kind of one of each. So now we have one of each. Okay, and the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our community, our customers, our Adafruit team, and everyone who makes all this go is? Uh, this is the ADXL 375. Uh, it sounds and looks a lot like the 345, uh, but it's more. It's the 375. It's 30 more than the 345. This is a plus or minus 200G accelerometer. Um, so we've carried another 200G accelerometer, the ADXL 377. Um, that is like kind of being discontinued. It's an analog output, um, high G accelerometer. We wanted to have an alternative for people uh, who wanted to do rocketry projects or, um, you know, anything with a ton of force. I don't really, you know, I don't know anything other than rocketry and maybe like race cars or like um, projectiles, what would could possibly um, have such high G forces. But if you need to measure high G forces like that, this is your breakout. Robot it's soccer leagues. Robot soccer leagues. So plus or minus 200G, not adjustable. That's the fixed um, uh, range. Uh, you can change the sample rate. I think it goes up to about a kilohertz or so. Um, you can use I squared C or SPI. It's got two interrupt pins. And uh, we put on this breakout that's STEM QT compatible with four mounting holes. So you can, you're going to have to mechanically connect it strongly to whatever it is that's going 200 Gs, right? So, um, you have the four mounting holes, uh, you can use I squared C or SPI, your choice. And um, what's kind of neat about the ADXL 375 is it's actually like the um, register map is identical to 345 or the 343. So if you happen to be using a library that has support for the 345, you can drop this in and then just multiply the Gs by like 10, whatever the number, you know, 10.5 or whatever to make it two or sorry, uh, by 100, you can make it instead of plus or minus two G's plus or minus um, 200 G's. And then um, the interrupt code and like the shock detection and SPI versus I squared C and the IRQs all of them act the same. It's pretty much this, it seems like it's kind of the same chip, but they took away um, the range select and they just made it. So it's a lot less sensitive. It's good for up to 200 G's. I'll say that there is an offset to these um, accelerometers uh, and it's more noticeable because it's plus minus 200 Gs. You'll notice a 1% offset. Um, and so these are not very good for measuring gravity. Like if you wanna measure gravity, which is one G, use our two G accelerometers, our four G or eight G accelerometers. This is really not good for that. This is gonna be really good for, the thing is going incredibly fast and you have to measure very high uh, shock or things um, that are acceleration. trying to escape gravity. Yeah, yeah. This is not good for this is not good for your general purpose. Like, oh, I want to measure tilt, or motion, or even yeah. sports. You know, with human level motion. This is for this is for your jet. Yeah. <laughs> this is for your rocket. All right, and that is new products. <laughs>